When kids are given a fraction visual like this, not many of them can say that this is actually one-fourth. The majority of kids say that this is one-third. Now, you may think that this is a trick question, but really, it's a trick question because our students don't have a solid foundation of fractions. And one of the ways that we build that solid foundation of fractions is by the visuals and representations that we provide kids around fractions. I'm Christina Tonneval, the Recovering Traditionalist, and I hope that you'll stick around today as we take a look at the number one manipulative for teaching fractions, the blank fraction tiles, as we work to build our math minds so we can build the math minds of our students. Now, you might be saying, whoa, Christina, this looks way different. You don't have your normal background of the books. You're right, <laughs> because I'm gonna be flipping the camera and we are gonna be working on my whiteboard um, table to take a look at some manipulatives and some visuals around these fractions. And there's two things that we are gonna be diving deeply into uh, today. Well, I shouldn't say deeply because it's way deeper than what we can do in a short video. But there's two things called partitioning and iteration around fractions that are super huge to develop for our students. Yet, unfortunately, we tend to focus a whole lot only on partitioning. And that leads kids to when they see visuals like this, just counting how many pieces and then looking at how many are shaded. And that's why the majority of kids say one third, but that's not what we want kids to have an understanding of. It goes way deeper. So I'm gonna turn this camera and point it down so we can get started with our learning today. Most of our instruction around fractions is based on partitioning, which is when you give kids a whole and then you ask them, okay, if this is the whole, show me one fourth. And this might be done with a drawing, but it's where they have to try to use these tiles to figure out, you know, they've basically partitioned it into fourths. And then they can show you that this is a fourth. Now, iteration is a little different because in iteration, you start with the part, you start with this and you say, if this is one fourth, what is the whole? So then they have to iterate that, and maybe if you only gave them one, they could draw that and kind of repeat it over and over. But if they have all the tiles, they would take four of them, right, to create one whole, and this helps them understand that four one-fourth pieces makes a whole. So there's it's sl a slight difference but it is a huge difference because it allows kids to really understand the value of an amount isn't based upon just how many pieces you have. If we wanna look and tell how much this piece is worth, it's worth whatever it takes to create the whole. So many kids have that misconception of we just count how many pieces, that's our denominator, and then we count how many pieces are shaded, and that's our numerator. But really, the value of that shaded piece is, is dependent upon how it relates to the whole. So we need to iterate it to see how many it fills up of the whole. All right, so basically, we really want kids to be able to have experiences with both of those. We're gonna talk about how you can help kids model this idea of partitioning and iteration using the fraction tiles. So this is typically the whole with blank fraction tiles, but you notice it does not have one written on it, okay? It's because the cool part is I can change it if, if this isn't the whole, let's say maybe this one is the whole. And so when you change the whole, it makes them have to rethink the value of amounts because it's not just written on there. So if this is the whole, they have to think about what is the one third? And they have to kind of judge, right? They're thinking in their mind. They're actually partitioning that 
in their mind to figure out the size of what a third would be instead of just going over and being able to grab a fraction tile that says one third. Right? This is from a different set, but this is the typical kind of fraction tiles that we see where if you say, you know, show me one third, all they have to do is just find the one that says one third. It's not really building any understanding of fractions. So one of the things you'll get is that as kids are trying to figure out what the one third is, right? You might get kids who do something like this where they're way off, but they're also doing iteration at the same time as partitioning. So it's not like these are two totally separate ideas, they work hand in hand to really build a foundation for our students around fractions. So they'll judge, they'll come back and they'll say, okay, those weren't quite big enough. And so maybe they'll start with something like this. They'll try something a little bigger. And then they realize, oh, gee, dang it, that's too big. I can't fit a third one in there. So they're developing all of this spatial reasoning as well as fraction reasoning as they are going through this idea of trying to find one third of that whole. And that changes, like I said, dependent upon what the whole is. So if I decide now that this is a whole, how's that gonna impact my one third, right? You can have these up here and have that discussion with students of, man, when this was the whole, these were one third, now if we want this to be the whole, what happens to our one third? So that's one of the weird pieces when it comes to fractions is that one third isn't always equal to one third, right? It's always dependent upon the size of the whole. The idea of one third is that there's always, it is a third because it takes three of them to fill the whole. It takes three one thirds to create the whole, whatever that whole is. And so again, they might start with something that they aren't too sure is going to fit or not, right? And they're like, oh, that didn't quite do it for me. That one's not gonna be it, right? And then this one, oh man, that's not gonna fit either. That doesn't work, right? So they're building all of this cool understanding as they are trying to um, think about this concept of a third they are creating this foundational piece of fractions, which is that unit fraction. Being able to understand that unit fraction is such a big deal, and it is the blank fraction tiles do that beautifully. And so this one is actually a nice prime example of where it doesn't fit so nicely there isn't a one third that goes nicely using these fraction tiles. So as kids are discovering this and they're like, what, why, why don't I have a third piece? Well, these fraction tiles aren't cut in a way that every single one of them is gonna have a one third. So the fractions may not be able to do it nicely. And so that leads kids into having a discussion about, man, if the tiles don't do it for us, how could we, what would it maybe look like, right, to show one third of that tile? So you can blend in the concrete and the representational as we're going through this, and you can also attach, right, the abstract, the CRA all together. It's wonderful when that all works together hand in hand, isn't it? Okay, so here's a quick little example of what it looks like to do an activity with these blank fraction tiles that, sh that is getting kids to truly model iteration. Like I said, in those other ones where we're doing partitioning, you're kind of doing iteration with it. Um, but iteration, a, a classic example is you just give the kids the part and you tell them how much it's worth. So let's say I might make this um, one fifth, okay? and then you ask them to make a whole. Or maybe you don't make them do a whole. Maybe you want them to make something bigger than a whole. But the idea is to help them start to understand that it takes five of these to make the whole. And that's what a whole could look like. It doesn't necessarily have to all be in a nice little shape like that. A kid could do something like this as well, 
right? It's the cool part is that you can build any kind of shape you want as long as they understand that they need five one fifth pieces to create that hole, right? Get it so that there's no gaps and all that fun stuff here, I'm trying to make it look a little nicer there for you, right? That is a visual of a hole. And the only thing that makes it that is because this is one fifth and we need five one fifths to create a hole. That's the general idea of iteration is using the part and iterating it over and over to create a certain amount. So the part is always usually you want to start out with a unit fraction. So if I change this and now this part is one fourth, right? What's a hole look like? So now it's gonna be different because we only need four of these to create a hole. If that's one fourth, that equals one. Or four over four. Four one fourth pieces creates the hole. I had that off to the side and you couldn't see it. It wasn't in the screen there. That's the idea we want kids to understand is that we start with our part, our unit fraction, and we iterate that over and over to build the whole. That's iteration. Partitioning is when we start with the whole and we ask them to partition or cut it to show a piece, whether it's one fourth, three fourths, whatever it might be. You're starting with the whole and then you're going down to a part. Those are the big two pieces around fractions that we need kids to have experiences with and they help kids be able to answer questions like this and so that it's not a trick question. We see this as a trick question because kids don't have experiences doing activities like this. So if you wanna learn more about fractions and these fraction subitizing cards, then I have some free training that's happening. It's actually being done by my friend Graham Fletcher, but I'm hosting it through Build Math Minds. So if you want to, click the link below to get registered for his free training, Demystifying the Fraction Rules We Teach. He's gonna be talking about all of those things that we teach around fractions without maybe even really understanding them ourselves. Because if we don't understand them ourselves, it becomes very difficult for us to teach these fraction concepts with understanding to our students. So I would love for you to join us for those free trainings, um, but I hope that this video has helped you build your math mind so you can go build the math minds of your students. Have a great day.